Welcome to the Middle School Choice Fair. And as you know, today we are online instead of in person. Um, and hopefully we are gonna have a lot of people joining us. We're also gonna be taping this. So if you know somebody who wanted to come and couldn't come today, they're going to be able to see this afterwards. All right. If you need interpretation in Spanish, we're gonna ask you to click on the globe button at the bottom of your screen and choose Spanish. Janet, can you repeat that? Para los participantes de nuevo, si necesitan esta presentación completamente español, presionen el icono que dice interpretation, que está en su pantalla, pero lo pueden mirar hacia abajo de su, de su pantalla. Presionar eso y elegir español. So today's agenda, um, we're going to start with an opening presentation. That shouldn't take very long. And then we're going to jump over to our middle school panelists. We have representatives from every one of our middle school here who are going to talk about their schools. Then we have uh, Manuela Raposa from registration. She's going to talk about the school choice lottery. Once those are over, we're going to open up the Q&A and we're going to use the raise hand function. We are not going to do Q&A until we get to that point because we have a lot that we have to jam in here um, in this hour. So we will open for questions, but not until after the presentations. OK. Um, one other piece is if we get to the end and you haven't had your question in, we're going to put a form in the chat where you can put your question in, put in an email and we'll get back to you. Middle school. Middle school is a formative time when students explore their unique strengths, they build new relationships, and they set themselves on a path toward adulthood. Uh, Providence Public Schools are here to guide students successfully along that path. I put on here a picture of a mural that we have at Del Sesto that says bloom where you are planted. And I think that's just the right message that we're sending to our kids every day. Um, our middle school students are encouraged to explore their own strengths and build those relationships, but also to prepare for the future. Now, our middle schools, they come in different shapes and sizes, but all work to personalize the educational experience and to nurture individual strengths and student growth. So you can see here, and this is a, an outline of what Providence looks like. So you can see where our different middle schools are located. We have Nathan Bishop, Isaac Hopkins, Nathaniel Green, Del Sesto, West Broadway, Gilbert Stewart, and Roger Williams. Now, Providence Schools offers challenging instruction that honors students' rich experiences and it celebrates the community's diversity. In our school district, social emotional learning is built into our curriculum to support the whole student. Uh, additional programming such as advanced academics or dual language, that happens through an application process at select middle schools. And in fact, we're gonna be talking a little bit more about dual language when the, the panelists come on. Now, our caring staff understand that they serve as role models for the rising generation, and they take that responsibility very seriously. Um, that's why community mindedness and student voice are an important part of every school day. Um, we also have culture specialists on staff at every middle school who are there to help make those connections between students, and families, and the community. Now beyond the classroom, you know, in fact, we build connections every day at not only in our classroom, but through our many extracurricular and after school activities. This guy looks fast to me. Um, we work very hard to offer 
uh, as many opportunities as we can to our kids. And we, we urge you to explore the different menus of after school opportunities and clubs that are available in each one of our middle schools. Now, just as our middle schoolers are changing every day, so too is our school district. And uh, many of you may already know this, but we are currently part of a state run turnaround effort. And that has clear and meaningful priorities. You can see them up here. We have engaged communities, uh, excellence in learning and world-class talent. And we have uh, different metrics and different goals that we have in each one of these areas to keep Providence moving forward and to make the experience um, better every with every iteration. So um, this helps us focus and it also helps us accelerate learning for our students. We know that's particularly important now after what we've been through recently with the pandemic. So now that's the end of my presentation. And now I'm gonna to move to our panel discussion. Remember to hold your questions until the end of the presentations. And Janet, can you remind folks one more time about interpretation in case they came in late? Ya ha llegado a, la, a, a este, esta reunión um, eh, para que entienda que pueda escuchar este, esta presentación completamente en español. Si mira hacia abajo de su pantalla, presiona el globo a la mano derecha. Cuando lo haga, entonces va a ver eh, la, la opción de elegir el idioma español. Cuando esto va a entrar a un canal que va a poder ver los panelistas y escuchar la presentación completamente en español. I also see that some of folks are using the raised hand function already. I, I said this earlier, but you might have missed it, that we're not doing questions and answers until we go through the presentation. So please hold your questions for now and we'll, we will have a Q&A at the end. Okay, so first up, I told you before about our seven middle schools are all different, they're all wonderful. And first up is Del Sesto. So uh, let me introduce you to Sam Wallace. Hi all, my name is Sam Wallace. Thank you, Laura. Um, I'm the School Equity and Culture Coordinator for Del Sesto Middle School. I use they, them pronouns. and I'm really happy to talk to you about Del Sesto. So at Del Sesto, we believe that student voice and choice matter. We value personalization and education as well as collaboration between our students, our teachers, our families, and the community organizations that surround the Del Sesto community. We have three academies at Del Sesto to allow for smaller learning communities. Our first floor is our PEAK Academy, which stands for Personalized Education for Accessing Knowledge. Our PEAK Academy students are focused on growing their leadership skills. Our second floor is our STEM Academy, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Our second floor houses our computer science class as well as works with our community garden. And our third floor is our STEAM Academy in Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. Um, that's on our third floor and that taps into our Turnaround Arts Partnership. We have a really strong arts integration into our class content as well as into our after school offerings, including things like a yearly musical. This year we're doing Moana, we're really excited. Uh, we have string and bands after school. We partner with PASA, the Providence After School Alliance to offer programming such as our Beat the Streets wrestling team, 15 minute field trips, volleyball, as well as we have school teams in basketball, track, cross country and soccer. We have a partnership with Inner U Counseling that offers in-building support to students, as well as we're developing a partnership with Rhode Island College, their counseling program to offer mental health supports to students and staff in our buildings. Our community partnerships are really what makes Del Sesto strong. We bring our community partners into the building. We have a city year team integrated into seven different classrooms, as well as we bring in Breakthrough Providence and College Crusade that offer social emotional support and mentoring as well as academic supports. We have a huge focus on our student voice. As I mentioned, we have not only a student council that meets after school weekly to plan student-centered events like spirit weeks and dances, but we also have an in-school student equity team that meets during one class period a week to learn about different aspects of identity and how to make our school more equitable for all of our student populations. 
And finally, career tech education is really important to us. A lot of our students from Del Sesto explore the career tech education offerings at the high school level. And we have career explorations as a class to make sure that students are not only getting outside community supports to see and visualize what they want for their future, but they're also connected to those programs when they go on to high school. Um, ultimately, we really value our honesty and our influence of our student voice to make strong collaborative choices. Um, and we're always learning and improving as a school, which is why I love to be here. Thank you, Sam. So next up, we have Adonis Acevedo. Adonis is with Roger Williams Middle School. Hi, everyone. I'm Adonis Acevedo, School Community Specialist. I got some information on Roger Williams. Let's get started. A way our school supports academic and accelerated learning is through our tutoring program, where teachers stay after school and work with students. We also partner with the Providence After School Alliance After Zone program which provides extended learning after hours for students. And throughout the day, students have the opportunity to take accelerated classes and different elective classes, such as a law class and a discovery zone for science. In terms of culture for our school, well, for the last eight years, Roger Williams has held the title as being the best kept secret in Providence. For lunch, one of the things we like to do when all the kids are seated is play all types of music, and have a section where they can even get up and dance. For two, each student is to have a bond with, the, with an adult in the building, such as like a go-to person, someone they feel comfortable to speak with when needed. And three, our guidance counselor creates weekly news videos that involves students as newscasters. And that's the reason why students don't wanna leave. They feel as though they feel, they feel as though they are a part of a family through our network our students and teachers and different activities that we have throughout the building. There's also been multiple ways that we provide social and emotional support, such as having a social worker, a psychologist, a partnership with the Providence Center, professional learning with teachers, and we also keep data in areas students need support in. For after school activities, we partner with the Providence After School Alliance, which is PASA after school, uh, after zone program, which has a variety of activities and events where students could be involved in. We have basketball after school, we have soccer, we have track, all through the Providence School Department. And we have turnaround arts that supports a yearly musical along with the integrative learning in classes. A few ways that the families can get involved at Roger Williams. Well, we have an active parent teacher organization that meets at least one time a month and we'll be planning more activities in the spring once we accelerate beyond the, perf the current health situation we're in. Parents can reach out to the FACE office with the Providence School Department, and they can sign up to be a volunteer at Roger Williams. In addition to that, there will be activities and events that we'll be holding in the spring, probably around March, April, that, that we'll need uh, parents to volunteer. PPSD has an application process for all training uh, and training for all volunteers. My apologies. Uh, Last but not least, I know that Ms. Gibbons is proud. Ms. Gibbons is our principal. Ms. Gibbons is proud of, of, have, of having hired uh, former students like myself. I joined Roger Williams back in November to support student attendance. I know I didn't have the best attendance when I was in middle school. And if it wasn't for Ms. Gibbons and a few other staff that were there and giving me that support that I needed, I don't think I would be where, I'm at, where I am today. Another graduate who's actually hired too that was there when I was there is my coworker, Miss Catherine. She was a grave above me and she tells me she loves it just how I loved it. To me, those are key roles in the community that help us connect with kids. And it's always great to have someone go through the system, work for the system and benefit the growth of other students. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you. We've got two for two wonderful, wonderful speakers here. So next up, we have Nathaniel Green Middle School and we have Renee Defoe. So Renee. Hi, everyone. My name is Renee Defoe and I have been a teaching at Nathaniel Green for 28 years. Currently, I am the literacy coach 
as well as the sixth grade aspiring principal. Here at Nathaniel Green, we have a motto. Our motto is, we strive to be great on purpose. And the reason that is our motto is because we are committed to excellence in education. We want our students to show enthusiasm for learning and hope that children want to attend our school for academics as well as social and emotional development. We place a very strong emphasis on college and career readiness. We want our students to be problem solvers, creative thinkers, and be able to advocate for themselves as well as show empathy for others. One of the most important experiences students have in our school is the opportunity to engage in academic learning with a very diverse school population and have interactions with supportive educators from various cultural backgrounds. As far as social and emotional needs, that is embedded in everything that we do at Nathaniel Green, starting with our advisory curriculum that is daily. And we also have a very supportive staff of social workers, guidance counselors, school psychologists, community specialists, who also support students with their social and emotional needs, as well as their teachers. Green offers a variety of clubs and activities. Currently, the after-school programs that we have, yearbook club, world language club, Latinx dancing, no-bake cooking, math, fitness, cross-country, chess, art, band, gardening, gaming, tutoring, cheerleading, drama club, stock market club, cross-stitching, and we're looking for more to come. After school sports, we have soccer, track, field, basketball, wrestling, volleyball, and flag football, hopefully we'll start in the spring. We have the Science Olympiad. We also have monthly family engagement events. We had a wonderful back to school night and a great fall festival and a very active parent-teacher organization. Why green? To support academic success, as well as accelerate learning. We have after-school tutoring. We have the Saturday Academy, which is a study hall. We have a blended learning period daily, as well as the advanced academic program. Here at Green, we value and welcome all students, parents, and community members. We have an active student council that represents the entire school body and meets weekly to discuss ideas and concerns so that students' voices are heard in our school decisions. We welcome parents to join our school staff to improve student achievement and increase parent participation by becoming involved in our SIT team, school improvement team that meets every second Friday in room 205 from 715 to 745. Please also look out for our upcoming monthly community engagement events. And you can follow us on Twitter, hashtag NGreenMidSCH. Thank you. Laura, you're on mute. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have Sarah Kelly from Isaac Hopkins Middle School. Hi, everybody. My name is Sarah Kelly. I'm one of the assistant principals at Isaac Hopkins Middle School. Yo no hablo todo en español, pero bienvenida a todos familias. Um, my name is Sarah again. I'm the assistant principal at Isaac. I'm going to share a PowerPoint. Uh, Google Doc as well to the crew so that if you want to see a little bit more about ESIC, you can. But I want to let you know that we know in our middle schoolers' lives that one of our primary focuses always needs to be working on being kind, caring human beings. So at ESIC Hopkins, our priority is kindness. We know that when our students are kind, when we help them support each other socially and emotionally, then we can get to that academic achievement in a higher way. 
At ESIC Hopkins, we have a standard of pride in our students. Um, so we expect our students to follow those letters of being persistent, respectful, having integrity, showing dedication and displaying enthusiasm, whether they're in the classroom, whether they're in the you know, cafeteria or whether they're wrestling after school. We expect this of all of our students every day. For after school activities, you've heard a lot about PASA. Those programs vary school to school, the after school alliance, they are free. Um, for us right now, we have soccer, basketball, um, we have dance, wrestling, baseball, art programs. We also have a student council, um, but we also always seek input from students about how to make this better. One way we're going to improve next year is including more opportunities for tutoring for all students so they can stay after school and have fun, but also catch up on what they need. Um, for academic opportunities, similar to other schools, uh, next year we'll have an accelerated enrichment program for students identified based on their scores from elementary. We'll have a math, math and reading intervention programs for students that need a little extra support, especially during COVID, to catch up um, to the grade level and be successful. We're also bringing in a behavior improvement program, which is going to be a small group of supportive adults helping your student improve around behavioral skills. We'll have career exploration through our advisory, and we include elective programs in the arts, library, and computers. I just want you to know a couple of things about ESIC, and then I'll be done. I just want you to know that we're a small school, um, you know, for a traditional six through eight. Um, we are the smallest that's six through eight in Providence. And what that means is that we have less than 200 students in each of our grades, um, which definitely helps us reach a, a community feel a little bit differently. We are also restoratively focused. Um, so we expect middle schoolers to make mistakes. As I tell them, I'm an adult, I still make mistakes, but we always work with your student to think through what happened, think through the conflict and build from there. Um, I encourage you to look at the PowerPoints as well. Um, appreciate your being here today and please reach out to us at Isaac Hopkins if you wanted to stop by or ask any questions. Thank you, Sarah, that was great. So next up, Jason Ramos. Jason is with Nathan Bishop Middle School. Hello everyone, my name is Jason Ramos. I'm a school culture coordinator here at Nathan Bishop. Um, one of our biggest models is we take care of you. And one of the, uh, we have plenty of ways that we demonstrate that throughout our school. We have a wonderful, um, we have a wonderful house system that we have here at Nathan Bishop. Um, there are four houses that our, each, each of our grades get sorted into when they first uh, join Nathan Bishop. Uh, these are based on the core values, determination, integrity, and respect and compassion, and then named after our social justice leaders here at Nathan, uh, um, at Nathan Bishop. Also to Nathan Bishop, we're one of the few schools that have advanced academic programs, and we like to provide um, any, any uh, how I say, any support for our students with after school tutoring with math, and ELA, which is very awesome. Uh, a lot of our teachers do participate after school. We do have a strong MML and special edu uh, education department as well, which is awesome. Uh, here too at Nathan Bishop, we do like to support the social and emotional needs of our students. Um, as all schools have PPSD, we're all hands on deck, but um, we're, we're fortunate and blessed to have a few uh, community specialists, uh, me a culture coordinator, some of our student assistant counselors, social workers, and school psychologists. Um, it's really great. So we have a lot of people from the community. Me and myself, I'm from uh, Providence community. My head principal, uh, Ms. Jackson, was actually my former principal at Isaac Hopkins. So <laughs> it's crazy how the small world connects, but it's also great to connect with my students also as well. Um, we have a lot of after school activities. Um, definitely we have after zone here, which is great. Uh, we do provide all of our um, sports programs too, like cross country, soccer, basketball, track, and wrestling. Also, it's great. We won a few championships in the past. This year, we won the cross country and uh, soccer. So we do have bragging, bragging rights this year. <laughs> also, we have a bunch of opportunities for our students and parents to get involved. We have a wonderful PTO, uh, PTO organization, very, very helpful. And also um, for our house system here, students get a chance to be involved in our decision-making process by becoming house leaders. So every year we uh, pick a few leaders from each house system throughout our grades and they come together for every advisory. 
to talk about these discussions and decisions as we're make throughout the year. The uh, great thing um, about Nathan Bishop, so we like to announce our caring closet for our students where we provide clothes, food, and essential goods to our um, scholars in need. Also to, um, we, uh, we just opened up our Italian program here. The inauguration was held this year. Um, Nathan Bishop is a great community. So if you have any other questions, please feel free and thank you for your time. So I thought you could all see um, Jason smile when he was talking about the championship. I think there's a lot of pride there about our athletics. Um, I, before we move on to the next one, a couple of reminders, because we've had some new people join. We are going to do Q&A, but we're not going to do it till all the presentations are over, folks, okay? And I also want to ask Janet, um, if people need interpretation, can you tell them one more time how to do it? Then we're going to jump into West Broadway. Para los padres que necesitan traducción a español, por favor, miren hacia abajo de su este, pantalla y miren el globo, el icono de para interpretación. Y entonces cuando hagan eso, van a poder elegir el idioma español. Desde ese momento van a poder escuchar la presentación completamente en español. Gracias. Great. Now I think Matt Valino is up with West Broadway Middle School. Thanks, Laura. Yeah, I'm Matt Valino. I'm the assistant principal over at West Broadway Middle School. Um, this is my first year there and it's truly phenomenal school. We have two teams. We have a literacy team and a STEM team. The literacy team is headed by uh, Melissa Gendro, our literacy coach. And she does a phenomenal job of really diving into the student data and showing our teachers, you know, areas where we can improve on our teaching. So it's always a reflection. And that's really what we teach our students to do um, in classrooms. And, you know, if there has to be um, difficult conversations to reflect on what's going on that they can help improve on. The STEM team is also um, headed by Ms. Roberta Engel. Um, and she really dives into the science and math stuff, really looking at student data and again, reflecting on it. We use supplementary pro programs uh, like IXL, Alex and Cengage for our MLL learners. And we also have after school tutoring, which numer numerous teachers stay after school, help our students uh, grow and learn to be the best students they can be. At West Broadway, I'm really proud of the culture um, that Mr. Prill has built. He's been our principal there for a few years now. It's so strong. Uh, a good example of that is the basketball players saw Miss Angle actually moving some science equipment the other day, and they volunteered before their practice to help her move it. And again, that goes back to the culture that Mr. Prill has built at that school, where everyone wants to help out everybody all the time. And it's, it's amazing to see it happen. Miss Mooney, our guidance counselor, has started off a Wednesday morning kindness crew. Uh, every Wednesday morning at 7.30, kids can come in early, they meet with her, and they come up with things they can do, like morning announcements. Now they do a positive talk every day. For example, um, I know I can do better than yesterday because I am great. They just say these little things in the morning announcements that really set the tone for the day and give kids that little spark to be the best warrior they can be. Um, and teachers, our teachers truly want to be there, and them wanting to be there goes into our students. It spreads like the positive energy at West Broadway spreads, and it's great to see every single day. We also have a very strong social and emotional team. As I stated before, we have Ms. Mooney, our guidance counselor. Ms. Malone's our other one. Ms. Plinton's our social worker. And they truly work as a phenomenal team to make sure our students are taken care of at West Broadway. They do things like social emotional groups. They meet one-on-one -on -one with students during lunchtime, and they do check and connects. If you ever walk by Ms. Mooney's office, she always, has, she always has a student in there that she's checking with. Same thing with Ms. Plain and Ms. Malone. And again, that goes back to the phenomenal culture at West Broadway. Everyone wants to be there. As far as before school and after school programs, we do offer tutoring. Um, that's in all of our core subject areas, math, science, ELA, social studies. We also offer um, PASA, as people have talked about before. Right now we have Latin dancing, theater, and other, other things like study hall. PASA also does, um, they want to bring in pets and vets, so we're excited to see all the different things they offer throughout the year. Our sports, in the fall, we have soccer and cross country. In the winter, we have basketball, sorry, and in the spring, we have track and field. Mr. Bannon also does a phenomenal job with our wrestling team. He has students probably averaging about five new students a week to join the wrestling team. And again, that goes back to our culture. Everyone feels comfortable at West, West Broadway. So kids are joining events that they don't feel they would ever join before. Um, that goes for male and female athletes. Everyone's joining the wrestling team, which is great to see them build their confidence. 
As far as families, you guys can get involved with our PTO or our school improvement team. Miss Engel really takes charge in that. She uh, meets once a month with both. And right now we have Mr. Washington, Miss Mian, and Miss Jennings. So if you guys know them, you can reach out to them. And they do a great job of letting us know, letting the school know what the parents want. And then we let them know, you know, what we're planning and then we bounce ideas off of. One last person I want to give a shout out to is Miss Pella and Miss O'Connor. They're our MLL teachers. Last year we had 13 students exit our MLL program, and we're extremely proud of that. And we're looking forward to uh, having more exit this year. Thank you. Matt, that was great. So last but certainly not least, we have Nicole Anwi, who is the principal over at Gilbert Stewart Middle School. And when Nicole is uh, finished with her piece, we're gonna hear from a couple of people about dual language and the dual language program that's at Gilbert Stewart, because we're actively recruiting for that. All right, so Nicole, you're up. Thanks, Laura. Good afternoon or good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Nicole Onye. I'm the principal at Gilbert Stewart Middle School. And I'm proud to say that I am the principal of that amazing school. Um, the mission of Gilbert Stewart Middle School is to prepare all students for college or their chosen profession. And I always uh, <clears throat> remind the entire school about the power of that mission. Um, it's not a new mission. It's been the mission of that school for more than 10 years. But it speaks to those three pillars that Laura spoke about earlier, world-class talent, engaged communities, and um, excellence in learning. And you can find evidence of that every day at Gilbert Stewart Middle School. Regarding academic su success and accelerated learning, um, we have a very, very similar programming to the other middle schools that you've heard. We have some things that are also a little bit different as well. Uh, we offer um, uh, support for students who are struggling and also for support for students who want to excel through our tutorial program in our Saturday school. So our school is open on Saturdays, three Saturdays every month. And you don't have to be a struggling student to attend tutorial or Saturday school. You could be a student who wants to excel, who wants to get stronger in their math, who wants to get, you know, go from a B to an A or from an A to an A plus, or it could be a student who is in the seventh grade who wants to be in our algebra class in the eighth grade. So we open the school up on Saturdays and after school for all types of programming, but specifically, we also wanna make sure we're always focused on those academics. We also have strong programming for our multilingual learners. We have the largest multilingual learner population in the entire district. And we spend a lot of time making sure that those students are supported so that we can help accelerate their learning and also their mastery of the English language as well. We also have a new dual language program and you'll hear a little bit more about that from one of my teachers who's joined us. Her name is Kianelli Capellan. Um, mentioning teachers, one of the things that I focused on when I first got to Gilbert Stewart uh, about two and a half years ago, almost three years ago, uh, we had so many vacant positions. And um, the uh, staff was not as diverse as the student population. And so I'm happy to say that in two and a half years, almost three years, we have 18 new staff members. Uh, 17 of those 18 staff members are people of color. And 15 of those 18 new staff members all went to Providence Public Schools graduated from Providence Public Schools, went to our uh, universities and higher ed institutions in Rhode Island and have come back to, to serve as full-time teachers at Gilbert Stewart Middle School. Uh, so that's also a testament to the belief that in our school that all kids can learn and that it's important to give back. So I, I think that's something that makes us really, really unique. Also, we have some uh, courses that may be a little different. We were the first middle school to start a social justice curriculum and we offer that at all grades. And it's a very popular class. We have sixth graders, seventh graders and eighth graders really talking about things that are important to them that are connected to the community, both the local community and also the global community. So the conversations are really rich and it provides students an opportunity to talk about the things, discuss the things and write about the things that really uh, matter to them. It's a great way to also connect um, the, uh, the, the core curriculum. We also have a summer boot camp called Camp Dragon, uh, which we started last year, and that's for incoming sixth graders. We spend three days with them in the school, showing them how to open lockers, where the restrooms are, where is the cafeteria? Um, how do you figure out where the classrooms are? We also have our uh, floors designated by grade. So all of the sixth graders are housed in the ground floor and first floor, 
Our seventh graders are, are held on the, hold their classes on the second floor and our eighth graders hold their classes on the third floor. And so that's the way hopefully um, we've done that to help the school, help students feel that the school is a lot smaller than it is. We really wanna make sure that we uh, cocoon our sixth graders when they come into the building because they're still really fifth graders, really young. And it's a way to ease them into this thing called middle school. So we're really proud of that. And it's also a way hopefully to support their academic learning. The culture um, at Gilbert Stewart Middle School is amazing. Um, we are on, constantly on a quest to develop what we call the beloved community. And so we are training all of our staff and we have already trained 20 students in the Kingian nonviolence principles. We also uh, have trained all of our staff in restorative practices. And we try to use uh, those skills and those principles in everything that we do. Uh, we try as much as possible not to suspend students. We try to hold on to our students. We know that students make mistakes, as someone already said, but we also know that there's always redemption when you have families involved and the school involved trying to work towards a solution. So we try as much as possible to really um, help our students learn from their mistakes and move forward and become stronger uh, citizens for it. We also have a school uh, culture coordinator um, and two community liaisons, all Providence Public School, products of Providence Public Schools. In fact, um, one of our community liaisons is actually a graduate of Gilbert Stewart Middle School and has come back uh, after graduating from Hendricken and uh, is now in college. He's come back full time here as one of our community liaisons. So we're really excited about that. We hold a traditional international dinner every year. Uh, last year, um, we gave this past Thanksgiving, we gave out over 150 dinners, turkeys, hams, to families to use for Thanksgiving. We also broke bread together in the cafeteria. Uh, even in the midst of COVID, we practiced really safe practices. And we had about 150 people in the cafeteria and we had a great dinner together. We laughed, we danced, we listened to music and each family was able to take something home to make for a Thanksgiving dinner. So I think that's a great segue now, if you wanna jump in to talk about dual language, Nicole, that would be wonderful. Absolutely, I will do that. I just wanted to really mention really quickly before I do that, that we have very strong supports for social emotional learning as well. We have the Providence Center in our school and also a school psychologist, social worker, et cetera. Um, those things are really important to help with um, all of our students, particularly those students who are new to the country, students who are really suffering from serious mental, um, who, need, who are in serious uh, need of mental support. And um, we also have finally have a principal advisory uh, and the principal advisory is like the student council in the school and they make, uh, they help us make a lot of decisions in the school. So they're part of that decision-making process. Um, we do have a dual language program that just started this year. Um, we're excited about the opportunity for students to learn in both languages and to become proficient in those languages. And I do have a teacher here. Her name is Nelly Capellan. She's our um, science teacher in our dual language program. And I'd like her to uh, share um, her perspective on dual language. Um, I'd also like to, before I do that, I'd like to invite any parent that is interested in uh, possibly having their child attend Gilbert Stewart. Uh, if you go to our website, my personal cell phone number is on my website. And people use it all the time. No one abuses it text me or call the school. We would love to meet with you, take you on a tour of the building and have you actually meet students and parents and, um, and teachers and see the school for yourself. So reach out anytime. I'm gonna turn it over to Kianelli. Thank you, Nicole. Um, welcome everyone. I'm happy to be talking about dual language. Um, as Nicole stated, um, it's a pilot program. So this is the first time Gilbert Stewart has ever done anything like this. And um, as she said, I am the sixth grade uh, science teacher for dual language. One of the um, greatest things for dual language that we offer is the looping process where the teachers will be following the students. So right now, the sixth graders that I have, um, I'm becoming very matriculated with them and knowing their successes and their um, some strengths that they need to work on uh, or some you know, different things that of areas of growth. And it's really very encouraging to see the students um, love the language program because they are able to use language interchangeably. We do focus um, sometimes on Spanish week uh, for, for one week and then we spoke, we would do English for another week. But 
it's very great to see the students um, use code switching and just be able to, you know, be able to express themselves no matter if they want to say one word and it, you know, on English week that's Spanish, that's fine. What we do is we just support the students with learning that language so that they have growth in the language. Um, but I'm sorry. That's wonderful, Kinelli. I, I don't know if you have, um, I know we have Mary Beth here who can talk a little bit more about it first, but if you have a little bit more to say, please go. I'm sorry. Um, well, the three pillars of our school for bilingualism, um, I mean, for dual language is bilingualism, which is having the students um, be able to speak with the language and biliteracy, which is having them read in the language and comprehend and bicultural competence. So being able to have competence of other language of the cultures that they have, because although it's dual language and the most that we have is Spanish speak, um, Spanish speakers, we also have other students who, you know, have other languages um, other than Spanish. Um, but ours is dual language of focusing on the target language, Spanish and English. Um, and then we also have great support system with dual language, although we are piloting it. We have engaged to learn who are fabulous coaches and they supported us even with the turnaround um, like planning that we did in the beginning before we piloted the program. So uh, it's really great at Gilbert Stewart and the students, they definitely, in, they, in lo they definitely love dual language. They always ask me, um, why wasn't this made before? Like I would have been in dual language, you know, since elementary school. So it's great to see the students um, become like more confident and better voice after being a part of our dual language program. That's wonderful. I really appreciate hearing from a teacher on this too. Um, also, we should know that a lot of the folks that have come to the middle school dual language were in a dual language program before, but not everybody. So I'm gonna turn it over to Mary Beth Brazelton. She is with um, our multilingual learners, that program, and she can tell you a little bit more about how it works. Hi, so my name is Mary Beth Brazelton. I'm the supervisor of multilingual learner instruction for the district. And I just want to briefly talk. That was great hearing from. I was in that teacher's class. It's fabulous. It was great hearing from her. Um, but I just want to talk briefly about the groups that we're encouraging to apply to this program. First, the first there are two groups. The first are current um, fifth grade students who are enrolled in a dual, dual language or bilingual program. And the second, the group that we're encouraging to apply would be also current um, fifth grade students who are not enrolled in a dual language or bilingual program, but perhaps would speak Spanish with their families at home and are comfortable reading and writing in Spanish. And I just wanna give you, that was a great presentation from Gilbert Stewart, but I just wanna talk a couple little quick things, benefits about um, dual language and multiliteracy and multiculturalism. The first one is that both nationally and in Providence Public School District, dual language um, students show increased performance on standardized tests over immersion students, um, or they perform as well or better than immersion students on standardized tests in English. So that's pretty exciting. Um, dual language programs are known to increase cognitive stimulation. Students become, they have better memories, better concentration. Um, they become good problem solvers. They show higher levels of engagement academically overall in dual language. Um, it also helps uh, eligibility for the seal of biliteracy, which we won't go into here, but it's something they can earn in college that goes onto uh, a college application or a work resume that's really very, I think, you know, very prestigious and sort of sets them out in, as a unique candidate. Um, it helps understanding, obviously, and appreciation of all cultures, which it sounds like we're all doing here. And it better prepares students to be global um, citizens, job markets and college applications. When you have, you know, not just two languages, three, four, some of these students have, when they have multiple languages and multiple literacies, it's a very, very, very strong um, application and, and a push for their success. So that's really um, all I really have to say. I just wanna say, if you're interested at all in dual language programming, you can contact me at the MLL office or Dr. Ronier or anybody that was on here, I guess, that knows about this. And um, just you can just pick your choice form and that'll get it started. And if you have any questions, please contact me. Thank you. That is, that is a wonderful segue, by the way, um, because we now have, uh, Manuela Raposa, and she is going to talk about the school choice process.
Hi, uh, my name is Manuela Raposo. I am Director of Student Placement for Providence Public Schools, and I'm going to be speaking to you a little bit today about what is school choice. So what is school choice? What, what it means is that families get to tell us what their preference is in schools rather than simply being assigned to a school. Sc however, school choice doesn't guarantee that you'll have access to any particular school. It just gives you choice. More seats are reserved for neighborhood students. Uh, around 80% of the students uh, get into their neighborhood schools uh, rather than the non-neighborhood schools where 20% of the students get into those. And finally, siblings have preference. So if you have a child entering middle or high school who has a sibling, your child in that school, your child will have preference to enter that school. So what is considered a neighborhood school, you might ask? So um, any school for elementary school, any school within one mile is considered a neighborhood school. For middle school, it's a mile and a half. And for high school, it's three miles of the student's home. So if you are in an elementary school, if you're an elementary school age and you live within a mile of the school that you want, that one is considered your neighborhood school. There are always a minimum of two schools identified as neighborhood schools for every student. These will be the two closest schools to the home. So let's say you live in a neighborhood that does not have a school within a mile of your home. The two closest schools, whether they're over a mile or not, are considered your two neighborhood schools. On the flip side, a student may have more than two schools identified as neighborhood schools. You might live in a neighborhood that has more than two schools within a mile of your home. And those are all considered neighborhood schools. So, Let's talk a little bit about understanding um, the, the, the importance of school choice and the process of student assignment. So the deadline for middle school and high school choices is February 11th. The fifth and the eighth grade province public school students, they, you must en ensure that your choice forms are in your schools by that date. The ones that are submitted after February 11th will not be included in the lottery and that limits your choice. So middle school and high school lottery, the lottery will take place March 1st. Students that are assigned to school, they're assigned to school through a computerized student assignment process. So if more students choose a school, then there are seats available then there will be a student assignment process to randomly assign these students to the school. And that's what's called a lottery. So you're, you get your, if you get your, if you put in for your first choice, let's say it's Nathan Bishop or Nathaniel Green or Gilbert Stewart, the first choice will be drawn and those seats will be filled. You might be assigned to your first choice school. However, if the first drawing does not assign you to your first choice, you will get your second choice and you will then be assigned to the wait list for the first choice and so, for, so forth for the third and the fourth choice. So understanding the wait list is as follows. The wait list will be maintained for every grade in every educational program when there is more of a demand than there are seats. So students can be placed in any of four categories. There are four categories for the wait list. The A category is when you have a sibling in the school of your choice. So that's called the neighborhood and it's in your neighborhood. So that's called the neighborhood sibling category. B is when you live in that neighborhood, you want that school but you didn't get into that school. So you're placed in the wait list for the neighborhood category. C is the non-neighborhood sibling category, which means that you do not live that in that neighborhood. However, you have a, a sibling in the school of your choice. 
So you will be placed in the wait list for that school where you have a sibling, but you do not live in that neighborhood. That is C. And D is when your, the school of your choice is not in your neighborhood and you do not have a sibling in that school, then you would be in the D category, which is called the non-neighborhood waitlist category. And each of these categories is held for each educational program. So if you look at the screen, you'll see that there's an example of a choice form. So you have all received these. And if you haven't, you should get one from your school or, yeah, or ask your student for it. The first, the first area, the first uh, block on the top is where it will be pre-populated with your student's name, ID number, current school, et cetera. And the second portion has the list of schools and the choice categories. So you will put an X under the first choice school, the second choice school, the third choice school, and then the fourth choice school. If you choose to do this online, you can. If you're a current student of Providence Public Schools, you can access Skyward, go in to Skyward, and you will see the box that will pop up and it will say, fill out the form for middle school choice. You will open there, that you will open that box and it will give you this screen. This screen will have your student's name pre-populated with the grade and the school. You go into first choice, you click on the little arrow and you put the school of your first choice, the same for second, third, and fourth. So this is an example of how you should fill out the choice form correctly and or incorrectly. So an incorrect filling of the form is when you choose one school for all four choices. That seriously limits your options. The best way to do this is to put, to choose a different school for, for each category, first, second, third, and fourth choice. So what are the, what can you do to maximize your opportunities to get the school of your choice? First, you must turn in the selections on time. Make sure that all of the paperwork, both the registration and choice forms are, on, are in on time so that you can participate in the lottery. Secondly, if you have a particular school that you desire above all, list that as the first choice. High demand schools will, you, will fill up using first choices. Neighborhood seats can fill up just as fast as non-neighborhood seats in some schools. If you do not get into any of your choices, you will then be placed at the closest school that has a seat available in your educational program. This may not be your neighborhood school if those seats have already been filled. Finally, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact the registration office at 401-456-9297 or email us at inforeg at ppsd.org. You can also submit a request via Let's Talk on the Providence Public Schools website, which is providenceschools.org. Thank you. Thanks, Manuela. You don't have to share your screen anymore if everybody's got those numbers. Great. Thank you. That was great. So um, what I'd like to do, if you can get out of screen sharing, Manuela, that would be great. There we go. Um, I'm actually going to turn a piece of this over to Janet Pichardo right now. Um, I'm going to be looking at the chat if you have questions, but we're going to open it up to Q&A. So that's when you can raise your hand to say that you have a question. And we're going to go from there. The, the only thing that I want to um, stress is there are a lot of people on. We have almost 100 people on. And so if you have a question, 
and, and maybe you have three questions, ask one. And we'll have an opportunity later, you can put the other one in the chat, but I, I can't have one person um, taking up all the time. We are also gonna extend the time here because we're running a little long. So we have about 10 minutes that we're gonna be answering some questions. Um, Janet, on to you. Okay, so Laura, we have two raise hands. You wanna take the raise hands first? Oh, you muted yourself. Yeah, can you can you call on them? It's fine. Yes, I can. Okay, so Maria Gomez or Maria Gomes, please unmute yourself. We are not able to mute or unmute you. What happened? Hello. Maria? Yeah. Hi. We can hear you. Go right ahead. Hi, this question is for all the panelists. What is the average length of time teachers stay at your school? and how diverse is your school? Except for Gilbert, because I think she answered this question already, the last one, but she came to the first one. I'm actually gonna yeah. jump in here to say that uh, we are about our teachers are about 20% um, uh, persons of color. However, our, in terms of our student body, uh, we have over 90% uh, persons of color. And what we can do is get those particular statistics to you. I'm going to put uh, a chat, something in the chat for you to ask that, but I, um, I don't know that we have the stats for every single one of the schools right now. Anybody else want to answer a piece of Maria's question? Can Maria repeat her question, please? Maria, can you repeat your question, please? Uh, yes. So for, well, for you, um, I think you already answered the second one, one, which is the diverse, how diverse your staff is. Um, the first question is, what is the average length of time that your teachers stay at your school? Do you mean stay after school? No, stay at the school. Like how long do they last at the school teaching there? Oh, I got 10 it. Year maybe, 10 year? Okay. That's a good question. I, I don't mind starting to answer. Oh, so, so, oh, go ahead. Renee, if you want to go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> well, I was going to say at Nathaniel Green, we have a very high um, teacher retention rate. Majority of our teachers, I would say more than half, have been at that school since 1992. And they're still at our school, including me. And what I can add to you, Maria, is um, one of the great things uh, about Gilbert Stewart Middle School very similarly is that uh, many of the teachers, I would say, you know, more than half have been there for 10 years and more, um, which is, uh, so they've seen a lot, they've uh, learned a lot of great practices. Um, however, at the same time, I think bringing in um, the new staff you've brought in has also helped to kind of uh, push um, the, the uh, staff that's been there for a while to kind of look at things differently and to perceive things differently and to um, get a different perspective on things. So I think it's always great in a school to have people who've been there for a very long time. Renee is an example of that, uh, but it's always great to also infuse when you can the school with new folks, with new ideas, new thinking, so you can have real collaboration and a real sense of thought diversity. Uh, Cause I think sometimes that's something that we forget about. It's not just racial diversity. Um, uh, oftentimes you also have to think about thought diversity, you know, how different perspectives, fresh perspectives on, um, on different things. So um, I can say that at Gilbert Stewart, that's one thing we're finding that having the new staff there, uh, especially since they're pro products of Providence Public Schools has really pushed people to think about things differently. But I think you, if you ask the new staff, they're very grateful for the fact that they have so many staff and colleagues in the school that have been here for a long time and they give them a lot of support as well. So it's a nice mix. Nicole is always so good. Thank you, Nicole, for doing that. Um, in terms of uh, some of the questions in the chat, I see Erica Lambert is asking, are students who have been accepted into advanced academics still supposed to fill out school choice forms? Manuela, can you answer that one? Sure. Uh, so you should always fill out the school choice form. Even, even though you've been accepted into the advanced academic program, um, if you 
choose to get it, go into the advanced academic program, then you will be placed there. However, your choices will still be held in case you do not. So I would say it's a great idea to still fill out the choice form. That's great. Janet, well, you wanna go next? Yes, there's one more question that's related to that same response from Manuela um, in the Q&A. My child is not currently in the Providence public school system. I did not get a choice form. How can I get a form? I am not sure I have access to Skyward Online. So you can uh, download one, print one out online. You can go to the registration center and pick one up. Um, however, you can email us and we'll send you one. However is easiest for you. Okay, so we have Genesis who has raised her hand. Hi, I wanna know if Nathan Bishop gives baking classes or something like that. Repeat that, it was kind of staticky. Can you say that one more time? Sorry about that. Does Nathan Bishop give out baking classes and buses? Well, we don't offer no baking classes. That would be a great idea, though. <laughs> I'd love to learn a few baking tips myself, but we don't offer uh, baking classes. I'm sorry uh, about that. Renee, was it your school that does a no baking baking? Yes, we have the um, no bake cooking after school club. I want to say to Genesis to quickly too, just jumping in here, Genesis, like your voice in middle school is important. We have Providence After School Alliance, and I can't tell you exactly what programs would be there in the fall because I don't know if you're going to be at my school and want to be part of something like baking. So when you come into middle school, your job is to let us know where you feel passion. All right. And then we will help make those programs happen because we always need to evolve for what you guys need. So I really appreciate you bringing that up. And I encourage you to let people know at your middle school, I am a baker. This is what I want to see. And this is who I am. Thank you. Okay, thank you very I want much. to um, remind folks, Gen Genesis had a second question, which was whether or not busing was offered at Nathan Bishop specifically. Yeah, busing is offered, um, especially for our after school program. So after zone, uh, when you come here, if you or if you are placed at Nathan Bishop, there is a list, list of different uh, after school activities, but there is busing provided for any after school activities that are provided by Nathan Bishop. Thank you. Thank you, Genesis. Another raised hand. We have Elizabeth Torres. Elizabeth, please unmute yourself. Elizabeth? Hi, good afternoon. I'm sorry. We were having okay. technical difficulties. Okay, um, so I, I got a lot of information and I really appreciate it. But my son, um, after hearing about the Sesto, we're definitely not in the neighborhood. Um, but what is, like, what possibilities is there for a child to get in? And when will we know um, when they got accepted? So... The possibilities are about 20% because you are a non-neighborhood family. However, if you place it as your first choice, that increases your chances of getting into the school that is a non-neighborhood school for you. So when you will be notified, um, a day or two after the lottery, the results will be up on Skyward. And about a week later, you'll receive a letter in the mail. You can also call even the day after or two days after the lottery, you can call the registration center or email us and we will be able to look that up for you. Does that help? Thank you, Elizabeth. I'm sorry. We have the um, one more raised hand and that's Reza Ortega. Reza, if you can unmute yourself. Reza, we can't hear you. If you can, there you go. Sí. Uh, buenas noches, ¿cómo están? Muy bien. Gusto de saludarle um, a todos. 
Uh, es una pregunta y también a la vez una inquietud. Este, bueno, eh, tengo, tengo interés en uh, Nathan Bishop, en Nathan and Green. En Nathan sí. Bishop, my daughter, mi hija estuvo el año pasado. Entonces, eh, mi pregunta es, ¿cómo manejan ellos? ¿Qué estrategia usan? ¿Y cómo resuelven los problemas? Los, los conflictos que se forman entre estudiantes, porque ese es mi temor siempre. Ok, muy bien. Gracias, Raisa. Raisa's um, question is actually a concern slash question. Um, she's interested in Bishop Ann Green. Her daughter Great. attended, her daughter attended um, Bishop last year. And so her question actually is, um, she, she wants to understand what might be the strategy or techniques for problem solving for students, student conflicts. Um, because that is her greatest fear. So, great thing about our newly, uh, well, I know the culture coordinators is not fairly new, but it's been new to PPSD and um, it's my first year being the culture coordinator here. So one of the great uh, practices I've been incorporating to Nathan Bishop is restorative, uh, restorative circles. So for our, our advisory here at Nathan Bishop, um, every Friday for our advisory, we hold restorative circles working guy on identity, problem solving, and basically strategies to aim at specific grade level uh, issues and problems. That's great. Does Green want to jump in at all? Can you jump in at all, Renee, or does, it, does that about cover it? Well, likewise, just like Nathan Bishop, we have the community specialists and they do restorative circles and, you know, everything's about restorative rather than punitive. That's great. So um, there are a couple of questions in the chat. One is if any schools have baseball teams. Do we have any middle schools with baseball teams? I know we have it at a high school level. Um, most of our middle schoolers are still participating in the like city leagues and their individual rec leagues um, while they're in middle school. Um, but we also will have baseball opportunities through things like after zone. Again, it's just we have to look and say, who are our students? What do they want? If we can field a team through after zone, that's something we would add in for our springtime. The sports we have at middle school, shared across middle schools, are going to be um, soccer for boys and girls, basketball for boys and girls, and track and field. I may have missed one as well. So at Gilbert Stewart, we actually had students who want softball and baseball. We've got some teachers, Kianelli is actually one of them, who's, who have volunteered to serve as coaches. So we're going to make it happen this spring, figure it out but we're going to do softball and baseball this spring. We've got some young energized teachers who are ready to take it on. I'm not sure if they know what they're about to take on, but they're going to do it. So we're going to do that. Uh, as soon as the weather breaks, we'll be starting that up. Laura, someone is asking um, in the, in the Q and A, how do we get information about extracurricular and after school activities at a specific school? Are they listed anywhere? And is busing offered for all after school programs? We're so, offer, we offer busing for all of our after school programs, and it is listed on our website. And if it's not updated, um, we'll let you, we, we will do that, but it should be listed at least on the Gilbert Stewart website. And we definitely have busing. Uh, that was something that was very important for us. And that's why we kind of limited our after school programs. I think we have about 15 so that we can have money to be able to make sure we had busing for the year. So, we also have um, a breakdown of all the different schools and some of their activities on it, but not all the extracurriculars are listed on at this, at this point. We're working on creating an app that would give you more information about that. We'll let you know when that comes out. But in the interim, your best uh, guess or your best uh, route here would be one, to look at the school website and to, to fill out the form and just say, hey, this is what I'm looking for. And you can click all the schools and we'll get it to you. All right. You guys see the Google form in the chat? You can pick one school or all schools and you can ask your question. All right, I'm looking here at some of the questions about when will we know when students get placed uh, Manuel, I think you talked about that in your presentation, but can you um, explain that one again? Right, so um, right after the lottery, 
uh, two days after the lottery, the information will be up on Skyward. So you, have, if you have um, the ability to go into your Skyward portal, then you can see your your the results there. Um, also, letters will be going out to the families uh, about a week after. However, if you want to know right away, I would suggest the fastest way: email us at inforeg at ppsd.org. We will respond the day after the lottery is held. We'll be able to give you the choice results and we'll be able to respond to you immediately. That's great. And so the lottery at this point, we're early March is when it gets run, right? Yes. Okay, great. So thank you all very much. We've gone about 15 minutes over and we caught most of your questions, but I want to point back to the chat. And I want to ask you if you have additional questions, please click on that form now so that when I close this down, it's open in your browser. Does that make sense? So um, you can fill out whatever questions, put your email in there, and we're going to get back to you. Okay. Thank you so much. And our panelists were so wonderful. I was just so excited to hear from everybody. And, and it's fun to see your personality shine through as well as the information. So thank you so much. Take care, everybody.